to Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Movie Reviews and More. Today, following in our spotlight of important movie makers and entertainment shakers, we have the amazing Canadian Chris Ball. He's a writer, actor, producer. His latest film, Summerland, is out this Monday, September 14th, and you can find it on iTunes, Google, Vudu, and Amazon. The movie is already garnering some rave reviews and attention, but before we delve into this soon to be box office hit and cult classic, I want everyone to understand and learn about the man Chris Ball because the movie's great, but even the man is better. He is the friend that we all hope to have. He is also that man whose very essence is full of excitement, adrenaline, full of positivity, and always trying new things to break out of a common mold or stereotype. But yet, he is still humble and kind, and I'm excited to share with everyone this man who is on the precipice of becoming someone amazingly huge in the entertainment industry. Everyone, welcome Chris Ball. Yay, Chris. Hello. Hello. Chris, I like Sherry's introductions because I can't do that. Well, I, 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 it's only downhill from here. I, I could never top that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You know, Brian's blessed us with amazing talent on the show, and, I, and when I believe in someone, it just, it flows, so I'm, I'm really happy that you were here, Chris. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Chris, talk about how this came about. This is a great road story, and it's one of those things where this is where, this is where I really love independent film, and you always have to, I was telling people uh, the other day for all this stuff, I'm missing watching a lot of good independent films. I think they're getting lost. So I was glad when Sherry reached out to say, we have to do something with this one because it makes sense. And I love where you went. Talk about putting this together because a lot of people don't realize independent filmmaking is harder. It's even tougher now. And so we have to do whatever we can to make sure those films get seen any way out there possible. Yeah, and it's a, it's especially hard with COVID now, too, because, as you know, films aren't being seen in theaters. I mean, the theaters are, are I hate to say it, the theaters are a way, of, a way of the past. And, you know, everyone's watching movies at home. And that actually makes it even harder as an independent filmmaker to have those films, uh, to have those films be released. When you're growing up as a filmmaker, of course, your dream is to have the films play in theaters. And then with, uh, with COVID, and that's initially how we wanted this film to be played, of course, and do festivals and, and, and all, the, all those things that you, that, you, that you think you want. And then COVID hit, we thought, what a perfect way, or what, a, what a perfect blessing in disguise to release the film during COVID when everyone's cooked up at home, watching films at home with their families. What a great place for independent films to, to get discovered if you can use COVID as, a, um, as an opportunity instead of, a, instead of an obstacle. But how the film came about was uh, my, my best friend and, and producing partner, Curtis David Harder. He's one of, uh, one of the co-directors in the film. He wrote the script years and years ago just as a one-off. Uh, he wrote the script for fun, thinking like, we're never gonna get a chance to do this. It's a road trip movie, you know, filming, <laughs> filming a movie in one location is hard enough, let alone actually on the road. And so he wrote it for fun and not knowing, like, he didn't know who was gonna be in it or anything like that. He sent the script to me and the script was so close to my life already. It was amazing, Brian. I was like, this script is my life. I have to do this. Like you know everything with just the character i was like i was like i have to do this like we have to so we kind of put it off it was just one of those projects we wrote for fun we put it off for and every summer we would we would go to fernie we would go to my family's place in fernie and we would work on the script just for fun like it was and, and i think there's something you get an authenticity with the story there when you write the script not from a place of okay, how can we make a marketable movie to make money, to appeal to the masses? Those are all important things to do as well when you're making a film. But when you come at it from a place of just writing it for fun, that's where I think a really lovely story comes. And it wasn't until years later, once we actually got enough experience and contacts and, uh, in the industry that we finally felt like we were, we were able to do it uh, by actually just renting an RV with our friends and going on the road and making the movie that we wanted to make. Well, and that's the thing, Chris, you said you wanted to make a movie that was accessible to everybody. And it really is, you know, it's a movie that the guys can hang out, watch and reminisce. But, oh, I did that or I want to do that. It's a movie parents would enjoy. It's a movie young kids, girls would enjoy, you know, the music festival. Um, 
but anybody that goes to see Summerland, I don't know if it's better to watch the making of the movie first or after, <laughs> because even that in itself is a movie. Yeah. Like well, everything, and you can tell that you genuinely enjoyed um, everything that you did. Yeah, and, and the making of the film, we knew from the start that it was we have to document how we're making the film because it's almost as exciting as the film itself. And that's why, we, that's why we're releasing these behind the scenes episodes every week to give people a, a window into not only how we made the film, but also um, to, to show, I don't want to say how easy it is because it's not, it's very, very hard, but to show that anyone can do it. I mean, the camera we shot the film on, you can buy that camera at Best Buy. You know, the sound, like it, it, we, anyone with just, with just a good story and, you know, and six friends can rent an RV and, and go on a road trip and make a movie. And that's why we really wanted to, to show the behind the scenes story of how the film came about. Well, and, and I learned that you had no permits, and this this comes back to you being, you know, on the cutting edge, you know, adrenaline, why not try it? You know, you did everything without permits, you, you snuck into avenues, and, you know, it, it's really fun. My favorite part, though, was when uh, one of the your friends spoofed a friend of yours who's also a movie maker and pretend he was a customs agent, because <laughs> we've all been asked those questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because cr crossing the border um, in an RV filled with filmmakers and camera <laughs> equipment was like something out of a horror movie. So uh, <laughs> we had, we, but luckily we had the um, the film festival, or the, sorry, the music festival tickets that we were going to do. And so we showed that and luckily we, we did get, we did get through just fine. I don't know how much about this I want to talk about in public, but it was, uh, we were fine. But then we called uh, one of our other producers that we were staying with in Vegas and yeah, we pranked him pretending to be one of the border agents and asking all this <laughs> and, and stuff. And uh, it's real, it's a really, really funny video because we, we totally got him too, because we, uh, what we, we, none of us talked to him for an hour as we were going through the border. So we knew he was freaking out, but, uh, but yeah. And, and it, th those kind of little behind the scenes videos that we posted, like it really does show how much fun we had making this movie. And there's a certain, I think there's like an authenticity that you get by making a movie that way, instead of like shooting it in a studio or shooting it, there's a certain element of, if you're gonna do a road trip movie, you gotta go on the road, you gotta do it. You, there's a certain element of those, those uncontrollable elements that make the road trip movie what it is. You know, the other thing about this is that RV sales are up. I know this because I've been talking to Are they? Them. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes, because more people have been wanting to get out, to get off the grid. Right, yeah. Then I was talking to Bolas, the original RV, they go back to 1933 in the US. It was like the silver one. The one that you had, I always wanted the Gulfstream. I think I, think I still want one for the property because it's fun being in an RV. But, um, but